My name's Hannah Alton Wall and I work for an organisation called Art Space. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Y Valley AOMB um, project Mindscape, which is a project for people with dementia and their carers. And to give you a little bit of context as to the background um, I come from, I work for an arts and education um, charity and we work with a real emphasis on breaking down barriers to participation. So we work a lot with adults with learning difficulties, um, people with physical disabilities, um, and also children facing challenging circumstances. Um, so we were really delighted to um, start working with the Y Valley AOMB back in 2014 in order to um, coordinate and deliver their Mindscape project. And other project partners include the Forestry Commission, um, Dementia Adventure and the District Council. So it's, it's been <coughs> great to work with quite a diverse partnership. So the aim of the Mindscape project is to improve the well-being of people with dementia and carers by enabling them to access the natural environment and to reconnect to the landscape or to actually stay connected to the landscape. Um, I'm going to just touch on a few areas how we've used natural beauty as a tool for reminiscence within the project, um, the fusion of using the arts and combining that with working outdoors, which is quite a powerful tool, um, and also just the concept of inclusion and, and how we can work um, with people with dementia. So the Mindscape project is a series of fortnightly activities. We um, have 24 activities a year, we run them every other week. Um, all of our workshops are led by um, professional artists and the workshops are really um, embedded in nature and inspired by um, the natural environment. When the weather allows, we're um, enjoying time outside, we work outside as much as we possibly can, um, but when it's hammering down, we use the arts to still connect to nature, but potentially in a cosier environment. Um, you can't escape news about dementia on the news. Um, I think the most interesting thing is that two thirds of people with dementia are still living in the community, so only a third are actually in care home settings. And only 44% of people in England and Northern Ireland are actually receiving a diagnosis. So. It's clear then that, that we're living in communities where there are many, many people with memory problems and cognitive impairments that are trying to get on with their daily lives. They're trying to live life as they know it. And if we could try and support them, then we know that this kind of work in, natural, in a natural environment will be of huge benefit to them. It's just trying to enable them to access it in the first place. These are some key findings from um, Dementia Adventures report. Um, they did a report called the Green and Dementia <coughs> Report for Natural England. Um, the key findings are, it's clear that they um, suggest that there is an improved emotional state um, for people with dementia. Also improvements to their memory and attention um, and also improved social interaction and a sense of belonging. So we've, we've really worked using reminiscence as a tool and we find that natural beauty is a, is a brilliant starting point for that. Um, it's difficult sometimes when you're trying to work with somebody with dementia because communication can be an issue and obviously it's, it's difficult for someone with dementia to form a new memory. So even though you're working um, regularly with somebody, um, they might not necessarily be able to pick up where they left off last time. Um, so trying to connect and link in with their earlier and stronger memories is a really great way of empowering someone with dementia and, and enabling them a bit of um, ease in communication. So we talk a lot about our favourite places in the countryside, places to visit, favourite holidays. Um, we're based in the Y Valley AOMB in the Forest of Dean. So we're working with people that have, have grown up in that landscape and often lived and worked in the landscape too. So it's a very important thing to them. 
So connecting into those memories as well and the stories that they have, their parents and the her heritage and the history of the area, which was quite industrial. Um, this is from the Alzheimer's Society website. <coughs> Apparently, 93% of what we communicate takes place through um, non-verbal communication skills, which actually is, is really good news when working with people with dementia because language can be an issue for them. So um, <coughs> it's, it's brilliant to use nature as a tool to enable people with dementia to get the most out of the session. Sensory stimulation is a big thing, so we work a lot with natural materials. The elements, obviously, the, the, the impact of the weather, the, the breeze or the warmth of the sun can be really positive. Smells and sounds of nature can also evoke memories and, and, and happy feelings. And we get a lot of feedback from carers about the fact that Mindscape to them is a real opportunity for them to reconnect um, in terms of their own relationship. And um, I think one of the most challenging things that, that we hear about from carers is that as people's dementia progresses, very often um, that person might change and not be interested in the things that they used to be interested in before and, and therefore their relationship changes. So providing a project like Mindscape enables people to, to reinvigorate shared interests or find new interests. Um, a lot of carers have said that it's had a really positive um, impact on, on their relationship with the person that they care for. Um, obviously natural beauty provides a really relaxing and absorbing environment and um, some carers have reported that Mindscape is one of the things, one of the activities that they go to where um, the person they care for can actually stay for the duration of the activity. Um, Nature seems to reduce stress levels, and um, if somebody is agitated, has the potential to take them to a, a happier state of mind. Being engaged in meaningful activity as well, just for a couple of hours, is a momentary break for carers. We've got a lot of volunteers that work on the project, so, um, so it's, it's great for us to get to work with participants with dementia, um, and the carers then can network and gossip and get a ton of support from each other, which is so important for them. Um, so the arts and nature, um, it's, it's a no-brainer to me. It's a really um, fantastic um, combination. Um, it, it almost doubles the impact, I think, of the, of the project. Um, especially, I think, for some of the people that we work with um, have mobility issues. So we're not able to go um, for a 20 minute stride through the woods or, or spend large durations um, moving about or, or sort of really investigating nature in that physical sense. So we use the arts to really reflect on, on nature and enable somebody to get quite a meaningful experience, really connect to nature, despite the fact that they might be in a wheelchair and they might not be able to actually get into those areas that are harder to, to access. Um, and of course we can bring the outdoors in if the, the elements aren't um, on our side and, and we find that that can be a real barrier for older people. Um, for, for all of us, being out in the driving rain um, isn't ideal sometimes, so um, we're able to, to still work with natural materials and still be inspired by nature and still keep that connection through the arts um, when the weather doesn't allow it. Um, the symptoms of a person's dementia will depend on which part of their brain is affected, so the arts is a great way of enabling somebody to express themselves without that need to articulate. Um, also to exercise control and um, Choice is really empowering. People do their own artwork. It's theirs. They, you know, they connect to nature in a really individual way. So it enables them to express that. So this is our lovely group. Um, we've worked with um, around about 20 people a year. Some of the people that, that come regularly um, have been coming from the very beginning. So it's been quite um, fascinating, really, and incredible to um, to keep the project evolving with the needs of the participants. Um, as their dementia progresses, 
we've needed to adapt um, and remain really responsive um, to everybody in the group. Their needs are so very varied. These are some examples of the activities that we've done uh, using natural materials, willow weaving. We um, discussed our, our favourite places in the Y Valley AOMB and we attached our memories to willow flowers. Uh, this is actually a mosaic that we designed and made during the winter months, so that reflects the four seasons. Um, being out in the woods and collecting things, one of the carers actually said to me that she thought that Mindscape was health by stealth, which I thought was quite good. Um, and she said that if she'd have asked her husband to go on a walk in the woods, he would have told her that he wasn't feeling well enough but give him a pair of secateurs and ask him to go and collect some um, materials to make a sculpture and he was away, really enjoying himself. Um, a poetry walk, again, so, you know, people can't walk that far, so we've, we've really tried to kind of get the most out of those sessions and really uh, reflect on why um, the landscape is important to people and how it makes them feel and then consolidate that in, uh, into poetry. This was uh, eco printing, working with um, natural materials, oak leaf dye, and making prints with leaves. Uh, this was a trip that we did to um, a famous sculpture in the Forest of Dean uh, called Place, commonly known as the Giant's Chair. And uh, the Sculpture Trust wanted to get Mindscape involved because, unfortunately, the, the, the sculpture needed to uh, be taken down. Uh, it had been up for a very long time and, and wasn't safe anymore. Um, and it was charcoal, and we had the opportunity to use the charcoal and work with an artist called Anya McCausland um, to express how we felt about the giant's chair and to create a new positive piece of artwork. So the group um, all worked together and, and made this fantastic piece which was then exhibited at, um, at Beach and Hurst. Um, finally, just to touch on inclusivity, how am I doing for time? Fine, no problem. <laughs> um, inclusivity, so uh, we really um, try to, to um, get the message across to other organisations that we're working with in the community that it's, it's, it's very achievable to be very inclusive to people with dementia. Um, there are um, barriers to, to inclusion for people, so obviously access to facilities has been one of the things that we've um, found um, is very important to consider. Um, the level of people's need and mobility and also the weather and the time of year. Um, but through working in partnership, we have worked with some brilliant venues. This, for example, is where the project's based at the moment. And it's a small holding based um, just right next to the River Wye. And um, they, they're actually geared up to provide um, workshops for people with physical <coughs> disabilities and learning difficulties. So they're... they're um, their setup there is perfect. They've got lots of level walkways and lots of facilities for disabled people. Um, but it's right in the middle of, of um, the, the beautiful countryside there, and we've got access to um, all of their facilities. So that's uh, the group walking uh, clover and petal. <laughs> so. Um, Touching again on people's mobility, that can feel like a real barrier when you want to do a project working outdoors. But um, studies have shown that just small amounts of time being outside, working in gardens and green spaces, still have um, a real positive effect on your well-being. So one of the things that we really try to get across to carers, to, to make sure that it isn't daunting and to make sure that people just don't think, well, I can't go out for a long walk, so therefore I won't do it at all, is that actually just tiny steps, you know, sitting outside and listening to the birds and the bees can have just as much of an impact on your well-being as going off on a long hike. Um, and carers have really kind of um, taken that on board and they tell us that, that they're doing mindscape type things in their own time, which is brilliant. Um, Again, we're trying to, um, we're putting together some training for, for small community groups, places like fishing clubs and walking clubs, because we really want to try and um, get across to them that, you know, obviously if you're living in a community and you have dementia and you've always gone fishing and you love going for a walk, um, sometimes when people get that diagnosis, those things just vanish from their lives and they're no longer able to go fishing because there's nobody there to support them to do it. So 
um, it, it can be, you know, really demotivating and, and difficult for people when they can't access the things they love. Um, we really want organisations that we're working with to, to be mindful of that and to try to um, <coughs> include people with dementia and, and support them. Um, so we're really trying to spread the word to them that we've accessed um, an awful lot of training. Um, we're an arts organisation, we're not dementia specialists, but we've had brilliant free training from the NHS, the Alzheimer's Society um, and Dementia Adventure. Um, we've also um, had fantastic um, support from the Alzheimer's Society and Carers Gloucestershire and other care organisations in terms of safeguarding. So people might be worried about well, what happens if we invite someone with dementia and something goes wrong and we don't know what to do. Well actually there's a whole plethora of services that you can tap into to get that additional support. And those services also have volunteers. So we've found that the project has um, attracted a, a whole raft of volunteers who are really happy and really want to give one-to-one -one support for people with dementia so that they can access the outdoors. Um, this is some of the feedback from people reporting that they feel less stressed, more positive and happy. Um, people feel more able to do Mindscape type things independently and feel more positive about being part of their community. Um, so looking to the future, very briefly, um, we've got two years left of lottery funding and we will um, investigate further funding. We don't want the project to end. Um, and we'll look to take forward the initiative and continue to develop new partners, um, expand the activity into the Forest of Dean and also hopefully into Herefordshire and Mon Monmouthshire. Um, but also consider whether we could join up with other AOMBs and um, national parks. So if anybody is interested in discussing the project with us, um, Andrew, Blake and Nick Critchley are here somewhere today and I'm sure they'd be really keen to talk to you. Thank you.